Christ is here, ask him what you long for. Jesus Christ is here, ask him what you long for. He will grant you the yearnings of your heart. Jesus Christ is here, my brother, ask him what you long for. Jesus Christ is here, ask him what you long for. Jesus Christ is here, ask him what you long for. He will grant you the Christ is here, ask him what you long for. Jesus Christ is here, ask him what you long for. He will grant you the yearnings of your heart. Jesus Christ is here, my brother, ask him what you long for. you all it gives us so much joy and so much happiness to give our honor and glory to the lord with this gathering we'd like to greet all the brothers and sisters around the world of our church we'd also like to greet in addition to that all the people that are joining our live stream uh, this is the church of god ministry of jesus christ international glory and praise be to the lord i invite you to continue filled with joy with happiness and bliss in our hearts because despite the troubles or difficulties we might have we should remember that god is with us and if god is with us who can be against us glory to god in addition to that he is the best way to overcome all challenges and attain all the blessings he has for us the best way to live our lives is by singing to the lord by praising the lord by reading the bible and by praying with faith let's enjoy what we're, what we're about to do because we need to do it with our hearts and souls. Let us praise and glorify our Lord. Glory to our King. I invite you all to join me in prayer so that we can start this wonderful service. Father of glory, great, heaven, great Heavenly Father, God who is divine and wonderful. Today, be it evening, morning, or afternoon, each and every one of us, as we gather from all parts, from all regions of the world, through this live stream, wish to glorify you, to extol you, to magnify you, my Lord. Because that is our joy, oh Lord. This is the best way in which we can drive away our sadness, our worries, and our troubles. By singing to you with our souls, by reading the Bible, by meditating on your word and your grace, my Lord. By enjoying your word, which is a living word. By filling our hearts with your presence. We thank you, my Lord, for this wonderful opportunity, for these wonderful blessings that you are giving us, that you are granting us through these gatherings, oh Lord. And we ask that you receive this service, that you receive our prayer with joy and happiness, that you be pleased with the reading of the Bible and with the words that are coming from our hearts, because you know that with all our might and our strength, we are coming together in this live stream to glorify you, to praise you, to extol you, and to tell you that we love you, oh Heavenly Father. Because you alone, my Lord, has helped us, has nourished us, has sustained us in these difficult moments. And now, with all our hearts, with all our strength, with all our might, and with our hearts full of joy, full of bliss and happiness, we wish to dedicate this service to you, O oh Lord, so that you, in turn, can be happy with us, my Lord. Because we do it all for your praise and your glory, O oh Lord. We ask that you remain with us, my Lord, that you remain in our midst, O Heavenly Father, and that you manifest yourself with great power tonight. We ask 
for all of this. And we pray, oh Lord, so that you bless us, your church, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. May the glory and the praise be always for God. Who is glory and praise to the Lord? Very well, then let us open our Bibles in the Gospel according to John in chapter 14. The Gospel according to John, chapter 14, starting in verse 1. Let us read these, this beautiful passage because these verses teach us about the great things that God can do even in our times because God is the same yesterday, today, and for eternity. Glory to the Lord. It also teaches us, as we mentioned, that whenever we pray to God, we pray to the Father in the name of the Son, who is our Lord Jesus Christ. And thus, we will be heard, and God will grant us his blessing, glory, and praise. Verse 1, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If you were not so... I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself. That where I am, there you may be also. And where I go, you know, and the way you know. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. And how can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Verse 7, if you had known me, you would have known my Father also. And from now on, you know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father, and it is sufficient for us. Jesus said to him, have I been with you so long? And yet you have not known me, Philip? He who has seen me has seen the Father. So how can you say, show us the Father? Do not believe, verse 10, that I am in the Father and the Father in me. The words that I speak to you, I do not speak on my own authority. But the Father who dwells in me does the works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me. Or else, believe me, for the sake of the works themselves. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do will do also. And this is wonderful, brothers and sisters. And greater works than these he will do, because I go to my Father. So again, the Lord continues to teach us this wonderful doctrine. And whatever you ask in my name, that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Amen. May glory and praise always to our God. Please be seated, brothers and sisters. And now, with our hearts filled with joy and happiness, just as Sister Marilisa taught us this sun, this last Sunday, with lots of happiness, with lots of fervor and faith, moving on forward. Because what better way can we sh can we uh, show our God? And we are moving forward by singing, but by singing with our hearts. So let's sing this beautiful hymn, hymn number two. It's a wonderful hymn because it, it speaks of the wonderful experience that 120 had in the upper chamber, which is found in Acts of the Apostles. And today there's more than 120 of us. And today we can also enjoy the manifestation of the Holy Spirit, of the Spirit of God. Glory to our King. Hymn number two, Old Time Power.
Blessed are you, O Heavenly Father. Blessed are you, our Lord, our kind and merciful God. May the glory and praise be always to our God. Brothers and sisters, let's sing hymn 150 as well. And this is a wonderful moment, a very special moment for the sons and daughters of God. Because once the Spirit of God came to our lives, He has also taught us that we should always pray with all our strength and our might to become temples of the Lord, to become the dwelling place of the Lord. And that is what this hymn of. And let us praise and glorify the Lord as we with it. Hymn number 150, Have Ye Received the Holy Ghost? Father, thank you, O God of glory, O divine and powerful Father. Here we are, my Lord, to be filled with your presence. Praised and exalted be the name of our God forevermore, brothers and sisters. May the glory be to our God. And just as this beautiful hymn states, this should be our one true yearning and desire. Fill our hearts with God more and more each and every day. And to do it during these particular times, we invite you all to pay close attention and to be ready for all the live streams and to enjoy of all the content we have here on this YouTube channel. And so we always remind the brothers and sisters to also hit uh, like, click on the like button, and also to subscribe to our channel. And at the same time, after uh, subscribing, we should also activate the notifications so that we can be up to date and up to speed with every, every, each and every sermon, with every one of the reflections of the Bible, and so that we can also sing to our Lord 
through all these live streams and pray to him for everything that we may need or also so that we can hear uh, wonderful testimonies because all these things will help us fill our hearts with God at all times. Glory to the Lord. This is exactly what happened to a sister in our church. It's a beautiful testimony and it's something that happened during the pandemic. Uh, there's a sister who was enjoying the live streams on the internet and she asked the Lord during prayer for two things. And she did so valuing and putting into practice Sister Maria Luisa's sermons. And I'm sure that you've experienced it because you all know that through our worldwide leader, through our apostle, God has prophesied to us all. And these are beautiful messages and beautiful promises that have come to pass and that have continued to come to pass and that will continue to come to pass. So God spoke through Sister Maria Luisa and said that everything we asked for, he would grant us, but he reminded us to pray for it so our sister started to pray to god with all her heart reminding him the promise that he made through the live stream specifically through sister marisa because they because they were his living word and so she asked them for uh, some extra money because she had uh, something outstanding she had an outstanding bed. Uh, and she also prayed for a brand new cell phone because her cell phone was in poor condition and she needed a new one so she prayed for two things and what was most beautiful, what was really astonishing is that the very next day, her boss called her and told her, you've been performing extremely well, so we are going to give you a raise. And the raise was exactly the amount that our sister had prayed for. So she had, not only did she have the money to cover her expenses for that one time, but from then on. And it's beautiful. It's wonderful to see how, how wonderful our God is. Glory to our God. It's wonderful, and it's and it's worth praying to God with faith. And a few days later, our sister ran into a friend of hers, and she said to our sister, I want to do something, and I have this thing in my heart. Would you like to have a brand new cell phone? If you want, if you want a new cell phone, tell me which one you'd like. And her sister said to her, I'd like it to have, you know, I like it, and I like this one, this brand. And her friend said, we'll go buy it right now, and it's yours. And that is how... God showed our sister that he heard her and blessed her in return. Give glory and praise to our God. Give glory and praise to our God. God is real. He exists. He is powerful. And he hears our prayers, our pleas. Glory and praise to the Lord. Let us now rise, brothers and sisters, and let us give thanks to our God. Let us pray. This is why we need to have more and more fervor in our hearts every day. It doesn't matter what we've experienced up to this point, because what is most important, brothers and sisters, is that we've been led by God, that God has held us by the hand and he has led us, he has guided us and he has been with us, he has protected us. Glory and praise be to the Lord. So let us give thanks to our Heavenly Father with your, in your heart, with your own words. Give thanks to the Lord. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, God of glory, God of endless mercy, God of infinite kindness, you have magnified yourself so very much in our lives, O oh Lord, for you have manifested your power in our lives. And you have shown that you are by our side, that you are with us, my Lord. And so we thank you, O oh Lord, for each and every one of the spiritual blessings you have given us. What wonderful blessings. What a privilege. What an honor it is to feel your presence sing to you my lord and to pray to you and to be heard when we present our prayers oh lord when we come to you in prayer and have visions dreams and wonderful spiritual experiences as well as receiving the holy spirit your holy spirit the spirit of the almighty so we thank you my lord thank you for your company my lord thank you for strengthening us for giving us that courage and giving us that strength to carry on day after day thank you your words for the doctrine that you teach us day after day that edifies us and transforms us and that helps us move forward that have triumph in life for your your word is beautiful and we thank you and we glorify your wonderful name we also thank you lord because you have provided for us and we have lacked nothing you have given us life itself as well as all material blessings as well as our health my lord 
And that is what you grant to your children, Lord. So we thank you for that. And we thank you for being with us at all times. We feel your support, Lord. We know that your support is with us. And we see your presence in our lives each and every day. So we know we're not alone. We're not disheartened. We don't feel hopeless because you are our strength and our hope, my Lord. So we thank you, Lord. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for this beautiful church, Lord. And we ask that you manifest your power more and more each and every day, oh Lord. We also thank you for uh, our apostle, for your beloved uh, daughter, for sister Maria Luisa, for our worldwide leader, oh Lord. We know that you are blessing her, but you are also blessing your church as a whole, my Lord. So we thank you for that. And we give you thanks with devotion and happiness and joy for all these great and wonderful blessings that can only come from your hand. And we express and we present our prayer lord i give your gratitude in the name of your son our lord jesus christ amen may the glory and praise be always to our god how great how wonderful is the name of our god brothers and sisters let us sing with absolute joy because our true joy in life is to sing to the lord and to know that he is listening to us that he is hearing our songs and that he is blessing us in return because god will surely bless us glory and praise be to the lord chorus 166 it's a wonderful chorus because no matter what is happening in our lives god is our refuge he is our shelter he is our fortress and he is with us hallelujah glory to god chorus 166 glorify you how great and wonderful is the name of our god even if the mountains move into the sea oh lord we will continue to believe we will continue to praise our god we will continue to seek the lord with all our strength and all our soul glory and praise it to the lord let's sing one more chorus chorus 171 so that the holy spirit of god can come to us so that it can come to us be it if we're at home but most importantly in our hearts Lord, fill me. Fill us with your spirit, Lord. Let's sing with all our hearts, brothers and sisters. Chorus 171.
descend upon us, Lord. Descend from heaven with power, O Lord. Your power, Heavenly Father. We may the glory and praise be always to our Redeemer. And brothers and sisters, with the same joy and happiness we felt so far, with the happiness that only God can give us, let's enjoy this most wonderful blessing, this sermon, tonight's sermon. And in charge is our worldwide head pastor of the church, Brother Carlos Alberto Baena. God bless you all. Thank you very much, Brother Christian. Cordial greeting to you, to all brothers, all sisters, and to all listeners and people who are newcomers who are starting to join our live streams. And this is a time of great joy to be able to be here, all of us together, praising the Lord with an open heart and with the desire of wanting to read the Bible and meditate on the Lord. Glory to the name of our God. You may take your seats. I would like to share with you uh, two testimonies that someone shared with me recently. One of them has to do with a uh, mother. It is like uh, similar to a testimony that I shared with you last week about a woman who had become pregnant. And as a result of the prayer from our sister Maria Luisa recently, for the babies who were in their mother's womb, wombs, the Lord has glorified himself in a really great way because they even sent me what the tests had shown and it stated, it literally said there was in the baby, there was the brain artery, the right brain artery was not present. Imagine that. There was, of course, a brain problem the baby had, and the mother hold, held fast to the Lord, especially when our sister Mary Luisa prayed, as she did, for the babies who were in, their, in the wombs of their, of their mothers. And she was so encouraged. She was so excited. She trusted so much with so much strength and joy that she said that, she was certain God had heard her, that God had blessed her. And days after that, she went back to the doctor and then they showed her, uh, they also showed me rather the results of the tests and everything, the arteries were all, uh, were all showed up on the test, the right artery that did not appear before. Now was the president of the baby. The baby was born healthy. Thank the name of the, of the Lord. Glory to God. All right, great. More miracles that uh, start to repeat themselves in various countries, and we had shared a week, uh, a couple of weeks ago, that God had also a week ago that God had performed a similar miracle in a baby, in, a, in another country. This happened in another country that they're sharing us uh, about this miracle the Lord performed. Likewise, someone shared with me another testimony about a sister who um, has been attending church for a long time now. She lives in another country, uh, not not in Colombia. And she has been attending, uh, she has been living there for many years, and she has been uh, moving all her citizenship paperwork. But even though she has a full residency in that country, permanent residency, the situation was still very complex, the situation she was faced with, because her mother became ill here in Colombia, and her uh, the daughter wanted to come to be with her mother, to support her, to be with her, but... The uh, attorneys told her uh, in that country that leaving the country in the condition that she was in the status of Shad, it was also complex. It was difficult because of the situation she was having, and they recommended not to travel. So what did his sister do? She prayed to the Lord. She said to the Lord, Lord, I want to be with my, my mother. I want to support her. I want to travel to Colombia, provide everything for me. Give me a way out or something, an idea to do. And she, so she said that she, sent, she submitted a document to uh, the immigration services of that country. She explained the situation. She said, look, my process is already in, in progress. I have to travel to Colombia because my mother is in a very uh, dire, difficult uh, health situation. I, I ask you to please help me, and I uh, please that it's not going to affect my citizenship process. And she said that these these proceedings are long. When when Whenever these requests are submitted, they still take time. However, 
what's imp- incredible is that on the same day she wrote to them, they sent, they replied to her and they decided to grant her the her, her citizenship right off the bat. She was asking for her request first for something else, and God granted her in uh, in a full way through her citizenship, which was going to take a while also, but then. It took a matter of uh, of hours and became a reality in her life. Glory to the name of the Lord. When God wants to bless us, he blesses us. And when the time of God comes and when it is his plan and his purpose, when people also are faithful to the Lord and when they give themselves to our God and when they have that willingness and love to seek the Lord, then our God does not fail us. He does not forsake us. On the contrary, he surprises us with great merit, wonders such as this one that the one I performed with our, our sister. Glory to God. And I believe that we all are very motivated and excited and that hope and conviction, knowing that the Lord will help us and that the Lord has been doing great works and great things for us and he will continue doing them. Hallelujah. Blessed is the name of the Most High. Let us rise and we are going to read in our Bibles in the book of Leviticus, chapter number 19. Leviticus, chapter 19, Old Testament we are going to read verse number number 16 Leviticus 19 verse 16 we read for the honor and exaltation of our lord you shall not go about as a talebearer among your people amen you may take your seats And as we just read, that's what we're going to preach about today. It's do not gossip it's, it, it, as the title of the sermon. It states here, you shall not go about as a talebearer, which is an older term. Today we say gossip, and it is some, but it is something that the Lord since antiquity taught the people of Israel, and he told them that they should not gossip. And, that, and today, also, in our case, we must bear this sermon into in mind and be very careful not to gossip because if we are gossiping, we are going to lose many blessings with the Lord. We are not going to receive the spiritual gifts either because when a person is not a gossiper, God also rewards them and gives them spiritual gifts. And here we all want the spiritual gifts. Agreed? We all want to prophesy. Can you imagine a person who has a gift of prophecy and is and is gossiping? Gives a prophecy to someone. Prophecy is the Holy Spirit speaks to the person about the person's lives. So, for example, the Holy Spirit may say to someone something that's private. And you have made problems with your wife. That was a prophecy. You have many problems in your marriage. With your wife, you cannot get along, get along and you argue very much. That was a prophecy. And then the person who is a gossiper will then make a comment or criticize or judges that judge that person with a third party, a friend or a person of the church. God will be very sad and he'll say, I cannot give this person or this uh, child of mine, I cannot give him or her more blessings. I can't manifest myself more through prophecy for it to be a, a, a profound prophecy that searches people's hearts, that brings out the, the secrets of people's lives because the person, this person is not prudent, is not discreet, but is someone who likes to gossip or make comment or judge people. And with this, th- she's going to, or she's going to destroy the church. And so the person will affect their spiritual lives and and, and that per, that kind of person will not be able to move forward or receive more blessings from the Lord. And gossips are or, or why does gossip happen? Gossip happens because people are have a tendency to judge others. People have a tendency to make comments or criticize and this is something that makes people make those sorts of comments or say to other people affairs that have that are belong to personal uh, matters of others also gossips happen because people are not discreet are indiscreet or they are meddlers, and so they, they're curious. 
So people uh, like to find out about the other people, other people's lives, and they like to meddle and, and interfere or or pry in, in private things, and they like to inquire about their personal affairs of their personal lives of people and that it's also bad manners and gossip is just bad manners because a person who does not have good manners is someone who has that kind of tendency to make indiscreet questions questions that you shouldn't ask to to find out things about private life of other people and also gossip happens because they do not keep a secret for example if someone makes a comment about someone else to me saying, oh, did you find out that so-and-so has a brand new car or has, yeah, ha or has um, a new tie? And I, we've seen him having new ties all the time. And so that comment, if someone welcomes it, what you ought to do is reprimand the person and say, why are you making those sorts of comments? I, 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 my advice, you shouldn't make those kind of comments. I don't see, I don't, it doesn't really make sense. I don't think that it really is not profitable. That doesn't edify anyone. So they reason with the person who made the comment and teaches that person. But he will not go and then turn and tell that person about that comment because if he does go to then tell the other person about the comment he will a big confrontation will ensue between those two and that happens because a person cannot keep a secret but ra but everything he hears he goes and tells the person the, the comment that that they were talking about and then you know arguments ensue and it all happens because of not being discreet or being prudent or keeping a secret or being silent. You teach the person who made the comment to you, and then you just keep that to yourself, and you don't say that to anyone else. You taught the person you, shot, you had to, and that's it. Or the person could, yeah, you teach the person, because that is what's correct. You say, why would you make that comment? That really, that, that kind of a comment, it's something that brings, you know, bad blood, as they say. It doesn't edify, but rather it destroys. And also... With gossip, there's a fourth L, um, item we would like to highlight. It's that they are harmful because they uh, they twist things and they distort things. And so, for example, someone might have been invited to someone else's house, a brother of the church, for instance, and that person went to that house and haven't been invited there and been, instead of being prudent and uh, grateful because if he was invited, he goes out to criticize and uh, he goes and tells someone else, oh, can you imagine so-and-so invited me to his house and he has such a big fridge. And and so, you know, it makes comments of uh, whatever he has at home, a big fridge first to say something. And then whoever her hears that will then say, oh, well, that person... They told me that he has, then he goes and tells another person, oh, they, he, they told me he has a huge, a huge fridge. And it seems like, it seems like, right, they have a huge TV because they have like a movie theater in there. And so then that one tells another and and so on. And then that begins all sorts, that, that starts in all sorts of comments. Or I went to that house at 10 a.m. and the, he was just get, waking up. His wife, his husband, her husband was just waking up at that time at, of the day, so he sleeps late, or whatever it may be. Things that are private. So whoever hears that then goes out and distorts it and adds something else to it, and then you see that a, a comment that is twisted. That is distorted comes about, which takes their their honor, their good name, takes away uh, their their good steam or their reputation and appreciation that people in the church may have toward him or on his, on on everyday life. And in that way, 
everyone else who starts to partake of those same comments and repeat them, they contaminate themselves spiritually. And by continue contaminating themselves spiritually, then they lose they lose uh, points in this in the sight of the Lord. And the Lord will not give them spiritual gifts. That person they they'll say, you know, this person is not prudent. This person because he's so imprudent and because he is so being a person who is who has such a tendency to talk and and just loosely talk and judge others then I am not going to give this person spiritual gifts because he has it he doesn't have the maturity required but he behaves without without good manners and in, in a in an imprudent manner and that way I won't be able to bless him and we are going to look now at, at several verses in the Bible to see what it teaches us about what we've been uh, saying. Here, generally speaking, he just said to them, you shall not go about, about a sale bearer. There's in Proverbs a, a chapter that says that, that gossiping is like a sweet. It's, it's sweet. Why does it say that we're that sweet? That's it in, in Proverbs 18.18. 18. Why does it say this? It says that it's tasty because, for the most part, human beings we all uh, we like to hear those sorts of comments, and people are always saying, "Oh, I have something to tell you about," and there's something that you can say that that you catch people's attention. If you say to someone, "I," if you want to find a mechanism to, for someone to pay attention to pay attention to you, you can say, "Oh, I have a piece of gossip." And you will see how everybody will immediately be in silent, open their eyes, open their ears, and we'll be ready to hear what you have to say. Because the Bible says, and the Bible is wise and perfect, that that's like a tasty trifle, that it's something delicious, but that it penetrates, it goes down in the inmost body, meaning it hurts. Why? Because it affects you. It all, Even if a person may say that, no, that... That doesn't really affect them. It does affect you when someone comes and tells you things about other people. Unfortunately, you have to be a very mature person for that not to affect you. But in the, generally speaking, it affects you because it just, you know, it just goes around and in your in your head spinning around, and that someone told us something about someone, and that generates lack a lack of trust. And doubt. No matter, I mean, a person has to be very mature for that not to affect him or her. So, what kind of a damage do you cause when you start to speak negatively about someone to someone else? Because even if that person doesn't want to, then in the, in that person's mind, that comment will still work. And perhaps, perhaps the only thing that can help you is that for you to say no, no, I won't accept this. I don't accept what you're telling me because I know that person and I know that she's not like that. Unless you you bring me proof, uh, something evident. Otherwise, it is not like that because I know that person and I know that things are not like that. And it isn't it isn't okay for you to make those comments unless you bring proof. Now, if we're talking about things that have to do against the church or things that affect the church, bad behaviors or something that's destructive against the church then you must speak up. Let me also make that clear because whenever you have to, we, we, we must defend the church and we must warn that something b b evil is being plotted against the church or there are people who hold responsibilities in the church and they are leading sinful lives and doing evil things and we must speak up. And that's not gossip. That you speak right away with people who are in charge of uh, spiritual responsibilities in the church. However, you should not talk about this with other believers, but you talk... Uh, talk to about this directly with the pastors or the or with our sister Maria Luisa or with the people of the uh, board of directors of the church or the office of the church. Aside from that, we must be careful and be prudent. It states here in Proverbs 18, 18, 18, 8 rather. Are you all ready? The words of a tail bearer are like a tasty trifles, like tasty trifles. Imagine that. So there's really nothing to do because that's that's like a delicacy. Tasty trifles, it says, meaning that you have you don't really have to try hard. It is, uh, you know, it's a uh, something delicious. 
It's something tasty, it says. And they go down into the inmost body. So as we were saying earlier, they can cause a great deal of damage and they stay in the person who hears that comment. That is why there is a passage in the Old Testament that says you shall not accept or circulate a false report because that gossip, it also has to do with uh, false report or rumors, rumors, and they cause damage with rumors. And they say, you shall not circulate a false report. And everything has to do with, with, uh, with proof or why are you making that, that comment? Meaning you should try to flee from that as much as you can, not, not, not let it affect you. Instead, teach people not to make those sorts of comments unless it's something that has to do with the church and it is very important. Or it, the manager of, the church, or of your business needs to know what's happening with the employees. If someone says, here's a proof this person is stealing money or, you know, in that case, that is something that's serious, but... You should, he must know, or so-and-so, this employee is getting drunk, then that's different because that person must know, the, the employer, the manager must know to make necessary corrections. But whoever finds out will go directly to the head. It will go directly to either the manager or supervisor and will bring that attention to light. But... You will, they will not start to talk about that with other co-workers because then that will also bring on problems at work. One of them will go and will, will uh, say things to the other co-worker that he or she is getting drunk because you made that comment and then you have yourself an enemy. So you, ha you must be careful with this. So now let us read in James chapter number four to see how it teaches us that we must not have that attitude of judging others. Here it talks to us about speaking ill, but it really encompasses gossiping. And because we've ta discussed also about complaining in the context of complaining against the people who hold responsibilities and the people of God, for example, the complaining against from Miriam and Aaron against Moses because they were making comments against Moses because Moses married a woman who was Ethiopian. And they certainly criticized that, that it was a person from the people of Israel. Because they made that comment, they made a serious, a grave mistake. They... It was not called gossip, but it, it says that they were complaining because it has to do with Moses. Today, in this context, it has to do with the leadership of the church. And everything that has to do with the leadership of the church is called complaining as an act against those sorts of people. It's, it's just that when it is regarding the, ministry, the, the leadership, it's called complaining in this case. And then, in this case, it's talking about speaking ill of others, of your brother or sister. That's why in verse 11, in James 4, verse 11, it states, Do not speak evil of one another, brethren. But when he says speak evil, it's more like not to engage in gossiping against one another. He who speaks evil of a brother and judges his brother, speaks evil of the law and judges the law. We must always think that we are not judges to anyone or superior to anyone to judge other brothers and sisters. And perhaps this word is able, can it really help us? There are people who are really prying. Prying is something like, someone who's accusing others or trying to uh, meddle in other people. And when you have a person who has that, th those sorts of uh, roles, they like to accuse people. And in our lives, we can see that a pe person, a person or someone who is always paying attention to what other people, m what mistakes they make or what flaws they have. And they like to accuse they like to pry or they like to make comments. 
meddling, and, and that is really not profitable. That if, if someone is perhaps having a brand new car, and then what, why? Where did he get the money from? Oh, did you, did you see that he has a brand new car now? Did you, did you hear that he has a new home? Did you see that he stopped coming to church? I'm sure that he's leading a, a sinful life. I, I really had thought that, because I noticed that he was, was someone who was flirtatious. So they're always having that attitude. Can, did you, do you see that that person can, does, doesn't really say hello? That has a really bad temper. Or, but why don't you think that the, the person might be just shy? So a person like that will always make mistakes. And when you make that, that comment to someone else, then you damage that person's image. And when you damage that person's image, you affect their spiritual lives of the person who is listening. And then the person who is making those comments will also be deducted points in the sight of God because the, the Lord will see that this is not a prudent person with maturity and God will not be able to really trust uh, things to this person. And this is what James teaches us here. And it is something that brings gossip about when you have that attitude, like you pry. We must be respectful of everyone. We must respect every person, everyone as they are, as they, however they dress, however they behave. Even if they have flaws and they are noticeable, still also be patient because God will transform them one day, but we should not be act as judges and what mistake or how did they dress or or how do they speak? What did they say? No. We we should quit remove that from our lives because in that way we otherwise we are going to incur in that sin of gossiping. We are also going to read now about in, in, this in Proverbs in chapter 20. Proverb really teaches us a lot about gossip, gossiping. And our sister Mary Louisa has really taught us many times that in the book of Proverbs, it, it, it teaches us what's something practical, you know, practical approach to life for us to do well in life, for us to uh, score points in the sight of God, for God to give us a spiritual gift so that we may have triumph and not have any problems and be happy. Because many times people say, oh, I have so many problems. People don't like me. I don't get along with people. It turns out that they are people who like to gossip. And because they like to gossip, they like to... They, they know them and then they, they cast that person aside because then everyone says, oh, no, we're afraid of that person because it's really scary to get, get, a, get you know, be close to her because then she gets you in trouble. So we do this ourselves because of our own behavior, being overly curious and meddling and lying to pry, liking to pry uh, more than what you really should ask because you're imprudent. And we do this ourselves. We, we shut doors. And we also, or yeah, or to have, to, to be, to have that way of meddling, for example, in prying into a married couple and, and giving advice when you didn't, they didn't ask you for it or acting as a judge or, or you see the mistakes of this, of the husband, the mistakes of the wife, or in this marriage, then your, your problems are because of this son or daughter. No, you must be prudent and you must remain silent. Or then you go out and talk to, about, to other people because of their problems that they're, they're having. But she's a problem. He's a problem. All that is bad manners and you shut doors yourself because people will then start to cast you aside and they'll say, no, this person, I'm going to have problems because of this person. And then people, they, com they complain about you and they say, no, they, uh, they, the people complain about themselves and say, why the, does, do people cast me aside and why haven't I received spiritual blessings? Blessings. Over something that it apparently, so seemingly harmless. Oh, may people say, oh, I'm so spontaneous. I like to speak up. I'm, no, no. Yeah, you can be spontaneous and talk about things. But yet, you still there's still a measure and there's still a limit. And that is the respect you show to other people and, and to value other people and, and prudency and wisdom. 
And we're going to read in Proverbs, as I was saying, chapter 20, verse number 19. It states, he who, verse, chapter 20, verse 9, verse 19, rather, he who goes about as a talebearer reveals secrets. Therefore, do not associate with one who flatters with his lips. So, someone who is a gossiper, according to Proverbs that teaches us everything that's practical. Being a gossiper means that you flatter others with your lips. Uh, some, that's someone who is a talebearer. Today we would call it a gossiper. And then it says that you should do, that we should you do not associate with someone like that. The Bible tells us that we should flee from people who are gossipers, and that you should really be aware be aware of that and not to lend yourself to hear gossip. But flee from that or teach other people not to do that. The Bible also teaches us in 2 Thessalonians. We are going to read 2 Thessalonians. Let us read in this passage, this epistle of the, from the Apostle Paul to the Thessalonians about gossiping it tells us in chapter 3 verse number 11 second thessalonians chapter 3 verse 11 for we hear that there are some who walk among you in disorderly manner not working at all but are busy buddies when he says busy busy bodies that's it a someone who likes to meddle someone who likes to Rather than work, he likes to pr pry or visiting, for example. Visiting people's houses, the houses of brothers and sisters. That's also something that we must be prudent with. And the Bible itself te teaches us this, that you shouldn't really have that and we're going to read a passage about this when, when we, where we saw that problem and in, 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 in the in antiquity that they like to go from house to house and because they were going to houses and because of you welcoming so many people to who visit you or people who don't you don't really know very well they come into your home to visit you and then they come to see things and then they go out to criticize you because people lack maturity I'm not saying that we can't really welcome any visits that's not saying that but when you when they when you go to visit someone, you must be prudent, you must be grateful, you must thank them for getting us there as a visit, and just remain silent, be, be quiet. If we see something during that visit, we stay quiet, because on the contrary, we, they opened the, 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 their home and they trusted things to us. And we should also really value the, the trust they give you, which is the trust that, they, that your friends give you. We must really be careful, you, you should... Take care of your friends because your friends can really trust things to you and they can tell you things. We have taught also about what what pride means, about vain glory. But among friends, you really can share joy. For example, a, a, a friend can say to someone else, oh, I did really well at, in college or I got an award because of my, my paper. I'm so happy because of my research. There's not vain glory because you're sharing something, a joy to your friend but then if you go out and and, and publish and, and yell it or shout it or testimonies also you can test testifying because we're testifying about god among all of us so when you're testifying yeah sure you can say to the church the holy spirit if that was the case had promised that he i was going to do well in college and i want to tell my brothers and sisters that i I received uh, an award because of my research, and I'm so happy. And I, I owe this to God. We should always give glory to God. I owe this to God, glory to the Lord. You shouldn't say, oh, because of my skills. No, God gave this blessing to me. That's perfect. Or you share uh, to, with people testifying or with your friend, with a close friend. You say, can you imagine what happened? The blessing God gave me. I'm so excited. That's what, perfect. You know, in a private setting. Or or can you imagine God gave me money for me to buy, a, purchase my, my, my car? You, you tell your friend. Of course, you're I mean, you're friends. Of course, you can do that. Or God gave me 
uh, the means to travel to uh, travel to a country where the sea they say is really beautiful and I would I love going to the beach can you imagine so but you know those sorts of comments sure you can make them among friends because you have that type that kind of trust that it exists and then if the person who's receiving the comment will then add thanks to it or makes an additional comment then the person's making a mistake because they're friends and if if they are sharing their excitement and the triumphs with one another if they're visiting their home they're you know they're having them going at their home and they're sharing their joy then the person must be prudent whatever they hear whatever they talk whatever they say they shouldn't really go out and divulge it and they should value that they're opening that that the evening and that chance now for example if someone tells you oh i traveled and i i did really well i i traveled for example i i would not if i don't like i know the person perhaps i would not say what what hotel did you stay in i think that you should not go so far because that's I, I say this I say this is a busybody a, a, you know too curious oh what hotel did you stay in um, oh I stayed with a family oh well uh, why uh, your aunt or your sister or who are they or things like that or well what about your family how many children do you have or and why does this have a last name and the other one doesn't have the same last name those kinds of questions no no you really can't be a busybody and you can't meddle uh, just up until the uh, to how however much the person wants to share with you but it all it's all about prudence and you must know how to behave so it says here without uh, you know being busybody they're busybody or going into uh, matters of, of married couples but rather you should have a measure that is what you ought to do now let us read about this topic in First Timothy here, chapter 5, ta which talks to us about situations that happen in the widows. Back then, these things happened because of a teaching that happened back then. But I would like to bring it because it, it says here that these women would go from house to house and that these women had that habit. And it says that they were gossips and they were busybodies. That's what the Bible tells us. And the Apostle Paul taught them that they shouldn't do this. And that sums up what we've been talking about. A person who is a gossiper, who likes to make comments, who likes to judge, who likes to pry, who likes to meddle, who likes to damage the other, other person's image, who's, who's distorting, who's not keeping secrets, who's always uh, distorting or twisting or adding more than it is or damaging someone else's image. Then so, and there's also someone who likes to, who's a busybody or who's indiscreet, and we must be discreet. To a certain extent, you ask. To a certain extent, we talk. But you must be discreet. Or if someone wants to tell you something one day, they'll tell you. Otherwise, they won't. I remember that once a friend of mine told me something serious happened to him. And so my friend told me, he said... I, I, I'll tell you what happened to me because I was so so worried. I said, are, are, are you okay, brother? He said, yeah, everything, every, we overcame it. I'll, I'll tell you one day. I'll tell you what happened to me in, if you, in a few days. And then I ran across him and I didn't tell him anything about it. He knows, he tell me, I, when, when I see you, I'll tell you. I don't have to tell him, oh, can you, what, what happened? Tell me. No. He never told me. All right, well, I, I remain quiet. I respected that. I respect that because if he didn't tell me, it's because he doesn't want to tell me. But how could I start telling him, hey, remember that you told me that you are going to tell me about what happened to you? No, why? Because he knows. He perfectly knows. He's an adult. He's not a child. He told me, when I see you, I'll tell you about it. He didn't tell me. It's because it's not the time to tell me. I'm going to start ask him, asking him, why... Why don't you tell me? Tell me, tell me. You told me. No. No, because that's having bad manners. That's being indiscreet. Or that's wanting to find out more. If he wants to tell you, he'll tell you. Otherwise, he won't. So we must be respectful of all that. That's a part of, of what we 
we must try to do. Now, you make mistakes. I've made mistakes with that, and we all make mistakes when it comes to that, but you, you ask more than you should, and, and that's it's really not correct. But we just have to let people be the ones to tell you if they want to tell you, and you always keep secrets. If someone's going to share a secret with you, if so, and my friend would have told me, a brother of the church would have told me that day, I just have to stay quiet. I just have to keep it for myself. I don't have to tell that to anyone else because it belongs to him. And that's something that's called keeping a secret and, or having a faithful spirit. The person keeps that to himself, whatever they told you, because of the trust they, they have with you. And you have to keep that. And this is very tied also with keeping your friends, with winning people's affection and people have to have a affection for you and that you make that people really feel that they can trust you that's very beautiful and then the, for our own life the, we have a harmonious environment for ourselves and so what does it tell us in first corinthians 5 13 it says and besides they learn to be idle wandering about from house to house uh, particularly speaking i have heard and we have heard a lot and our sister Mary louisa has taught us about this topic that when people like to go to, from house to house visiting and into and, and your house, many people come over, that just ensues problems. I'm not saying that you shouldn't ever receive any visits, but, but I am saying that you should be selective when it comes to that and that you should be careful. Who do you welcome into your, in your, into your home? And you just keep your private life to yourself. And Because oftentimes it, it, it can be that you become a victim of gossip or they can get you in trouble. So this happened back then and it happens today. They want wandering about from house to house and not only idle, similar to the previous one, that because of not having any activity, then they just like to gossip around, it says, but also gossips and busybodies. So there it is. So those are the words. In the New Testament, it says, saying things which they ought not. And that's right, because you start to say things that really are make, make no sense. They don't edify you and they don't gain, gain you anything. Now let us read in Proverbs chapter 11. Proverbs chapter 11. We are going to read verse number 13. Proverbs 11, verse 13. It states, the Bible teaches us, a talebearer reveals secrets. And so, also because a person is finding out or asking more than he ought to, so they, they reveal a secret or they don't keep a secret. When he knows the secret, then they go and tell it to other people because they have that attitude in their lives. A person who is a gossiper has an attitude towards life that is inappropriate, that is not adequate, that, that they like to find out and pry. They like, in addition to metal, they also like to pry and investigate, and that should not be done. But he who is of a faithful spirit conceals a matter, especially when it comes to that, when when a person for any reason in life found something out, they just remain quiet and they keep it to themselves because they're faithful. And they're not going to tell this, say this to anyone. This is what the Bible teaches us. It's not that we're making it up. It, note that Proverbs, and everywhere you see that it's talking about prudence. And that's what really helps you in life. Being prudent not getting yourself in gossip and not make comments, always uh, looking for conversations that are edifying, that, that build you up spiritually. That is what the Lord wants. And also, it, the, it teaches us, the Bible teaches us, in Proverbs 17, 9, about this topic, something that I think it, it's beautiful because It, it teaches us the following. He, 17.9, He who covers a transgression seeks love, but he who repeats it, a matter 
separates friends. Uh, that's true. And I know some people who, at a certain point in time, they saw that uh, a child of some friends of theirs had made a mistake. And also, I know about another case about a, a, a daughter who were out on a trip and, and, and a daughter of that family made a mistake. And in both cases, what, what they did was to speak up speak with their father with their parents or even with the young person and this married couple spoke with this young lady and said to her look we saw that you made this mistake your parents didn't realize it but we did realize we did see it and we just want to teach you with all our love that that's a mistake that really looks bad on you to do that and those people taught that to this this girl and that girl never made that mistake ever again. And do you think that those parents, that they have, have they ever said anything to anyone else? Nothing, nothing. That, that mistake, that it wasn't so serious either, but it was a mistake. And some people, these people who were mature, this married couple said to this young lady, that doesn't look, that, that looks bad on you. It will affect your spiritual life, your, your physical life. It's wrong what you did. Don't do it again. It wasn't also, it wasn't something that it was a life or death situation, but it was a mistake. They taught her and her parents have such gratitude towards these married, this married couple to see how their daughter corrected her cor her, her life. And they never made a, a destructive comment because these, this, this couple, married couple could have come to her and, and said, oh, can you imagine what we saw with the daughter of so-and-so? She, what she did, she was doing this, and we called her. We did call her, and we corrected her, and we told her that this was really bad. So what? What about this little this girl's honor? So everyone else who made the mistake, everyone will think, oh, that 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 girl is not trustworthy. And turns out it was something that in at an instant in life that that just happened, and it was corrected, and not something else. It's different if that person makes the, if that little girl makes the same mistake again and again. Then you talk to the pastor and you oh, look, this, this girl is doing this or to the, talk to the parents. You have to correct her or with, uh, for example, if that young woman should have, should she have any responsibility in the church? Well, she shouldn't have any responsibility because this is what she's doing. But if it was something fleeting and it wasn't something so serious either, you just correct her and you cover it. You cover that uh, infraction and you, you help them and you don't damage their honor. He who covers a transgression seeks love. But he who repeats it a matter, who repeats a matter, separates friends. So that's beautiful because these the the parents of these young girl they admired their the wisdom of this married couple and their prudence, and that was it. That was the end of the problem. And this girl, this young woman, woman carried on with her life in a good path. So that's what Proverbs teaches us, as well as in Proverbs twenty five, in verse nine. It says you that you don't repeat it, meaning you just start to judge them and you don't start to gossip because then they hear someone and then someone who is immature is there and may tell this to someone else. So can you imagine the daughter to so of so-and-so was doing this and that? So they make it bigger and then the other makes it bigger and bigger and damage that person's image. Now, we, uh, as I repeat, we're going to read Proverbs 25, verse number 9. It states, Debate your case with your neighbor. And do not disclose, disclose the secret to another. So you must all speak it out, speak it up in person or with the person that you should. And if, if there is something that is not pleasing or if, if there's if you see your friend or the brother, of the church making comments. That are unpleasing. That cause can cause bad blood you can say why would you make such comments it really doesn't look good on you you have no proof also you're just uh, supposing it imagining it or someone made a comment to you and they're you filling your head with gossip to to create bad blood amongst you two for as friends don't pay attention to that that's the devil who wants to separate you two and you should speak everything up and you should talk it out 
and you don't divulge it and you don't that's prudency and that's how you solve problems debate your case with your neighbor and do not disclose the secret to another so it's just among the two of them unless of course it affects the church or something really serious otherwise no you just talk it out among brothers and sisters and you solve it among amongst yourselves and it stays amongst them lest he who hears it expose your shame and your reputation be ruined because then you say this to someone else, and then that that uh, that someone else damaged your reputation because he went and told that friend, and then the friend felt disappointed that his friend betrayed him, and then takes him as uh, and, and that r friendship is ruined because they did not handle the situation with wisdom. These conversations that happen in happen in life, conversations that are that happen on a daily, uh, everyday life. That, that are seemingly harmless, you should still know how to administer that. Also, the Bible tells us, let us read in the Bible, in Proverbs 26, verse number 20, which teaches us the following. Where there is no wood, the fire goes out, and where there is no talebearer, strife ceases. Meaning that the talebearer or a gossiper is like wood to the fire, and that really happens when you have friends, and perhaps someone else comes, a third party comes, and makes a comment to a friend, and then to another friend, and then brings and takes and brings, takes and brings. Oh, he said this, she said this. And they answer and they separate friends and they lit a fire among them because a tail bearer, that's what a tail bearer does. That's what a gossiper does. It, it, he puts people away. And also we are going to read Proverbs 16, 28. Proverbs 16, 28, which is what we are talking about here. That there are good friends, really good friends, and then the gossiper will drive them away. Because a gossiper is, takes it upon himself to bring people away. And it's like, it's a, he, he said, she said, as they say. Oh, he said this, and then the other answers, and then it comes and brings, a, and he, so he said, he said, she said. And it ends up bring, bring, driving friends away. That's what it tells us. And in verse 28, a perverse man so strives and a whisperer or a gossiper separates the best of friends. And that happens in our daily life also. And you should really be careful with that because when you least expect it, you might be living that situation. Also in Proverbs chapter number 10, we are going to read... Proverbs chapter 10, how could we, just so that we start to close and end, how could we overcome this situation, gossip and not partaking comments and judge people and meddle in people's lives, being indiscreet, being overly curious, lacking manners, losing blessings, driving spiritual gifts away from us, destroying people's spiritual lives, contaminating them, twisting everything. In Proverbs 10, it, Proverbs 10 teaches us the way, and that's what we should ask the Lord. We should ask God that He brings us away from all that, which is, and what, which is what we could call prudency. We need prudency. We need wisdom. And, and you should say, Lord, I ask you to please give me prudency because whenever I, I am able to be prudent, then I'm going to stay away from gossiping. What is prudency? Prudency means taking precaution to speak. So whenever you're going to speak, you are you are cautious and you... When you're, you're cautious, and if you're prudent, you're cautious, and you say, if I say this, that can happen. I could make that happen, or I can make bring problems. I could destroy their friendship. I'm not going to say it. I'm going to stay quiet. Why should I speak up? 
I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. No, I'm not going to do it because if I do it, then I'm going to affect them. I am going to destroy them or I'm going to wreck, wreck their friendships or I'm going to um, bring conflicts. I'm just going to stay quiet. That's called prudency. And that's what we should ask the Lord. Wisdom as well. As it states in Proverbs 10 verse 19. In the multitude of words, sin is not lacking. So also, you should also be careful with that. In the multitude of words, meaning speaking more than you should. But he who restrains his lips is wise. Wise because you restrain your lips. Why do I, what should I say? What should I not say? They tell me a secret. I'm just going to stay quiet. Why should I disclose to someone else? Because they, they trusted this to me. And they didn't, they didn't tell me that I should say it to anyone else. I'm going to stay quiet. Prudency. And also verse number 13. Wisdom is found on the, there it is. Wisdom is found on the lips of him who has understanding. So as we have learned about wisdom, our sister Maria Luisa has taught us. And wisdom that comes from on high, that is pure, kind, tied to the spiritual gifts. But mainly to the, the spiritual fruits to perfection. Is the one that is found on the lips of him who has understanding. So that's what it is. That's why it says, but a rod is for the back of him who is devoid of understanding. Back then, they used to actually whip them physically. Today, that does, there's no physical punishment in the gospel. But today, that punishment is given is grant, given now by the Lord because we lose blessings. What greater punishment can there be than not receiving the spiritual gifts, than leading a spiritual lives that's stagnant, or than losing our friends? Or having people cast us aside or having people being afraid of us and not even want to come close to us. I think that's the worst punishment, not to have that harmony. And that is why it recommends that pastors and elders of the church, we're going to read in Titus chapter number two. It's, it says, if you want to be a preacher, you must be prudent, discreet. Can you imagine a, a pastor who doesn't keep secrets if believers come and tell because they trust in their pastors, male or females, they trust them blindly and they tell them their problems. And then that pastor does not keep the secret. They must keep the secrets because that's everything. You must be prudent. You must be discreet. There can be no female pastors, male pastors that are imprudent. No, you must be prudent or indiscreet. That's why it text talks to us about elder men or elders that who have experience and know the doctrine. It's Titus 2 states verse number 1. In fact, it says, But as for you, speak the things which are proper for sound doctrine. That, there it is. It's already talking about sound doctrine that the older man be sober, reverent, temperate. Temperate means prudent, what we just talked about. Sound in faith and love and patience. Prudent, temperate. The older women, likewise, verse 3, it says that they be reverent in behavior, not slanderers, not given to want too much wine, teachers of good things. Verse 4, that they admonish the young women to love their husbands, to, their, to love their children. Verse 5, to be discreet. There it is. Therefore, both also both for male pastors, for female pastors as well. And we end on Proverbs 21. Not only for pastors, though, but also for those who are candidates. All of you. Agreed? All of us. We all want to serve the Lord. And we all want to be a good testimony, whether on a pulpit or not on the pulpit, with the spiritual gifts, with our way, with the way we live, and for people to really feel pleased with us, and for people to trust us, and for people to know that we are trustworthy, that we are not going to uh, make them look bad, that we're going to help them, that we have good feelings. Proverbs 21, 23, it ends by saying the, the following, Whoever guards his mouth and tongue keeps his soul from troubles. That's the best advice. If you keep your mouth and you keep your tongue, you will have no troubles. Glory to the name of the Lord. Let us rise. We are going to pray for our petitions, for healings, for deliverance, 
and also for the Lord to help us so that we put this sermon into practice. Blessed Lord, we thank you for this gathering. We bless you and we exalt you. We beg you, Lord, that you help us so that we may continue edifying our spiritual lives and that we may stay far from gossip and that we attain prudency. O Lord of glory, give us also spiritual wisdom, a healing rather, and deliver us from witchcraft, sorcery, curses, depression, nightmares, insomnia, dangers of death, perils of accidents, or attacks of the enemy, and the envy of the devil. May it be removed, cut down, and cast away. May the God of glory heal us also physically from any spirit, evil spirits of illness and incurable from this virus, Lord, that strikes, that is striking humankind. And Lord, may you heal your people from an incurable and serious disease, any ailment that may want to put a, make us bedridden or prevent us from serving you. And we beg you, Lord, that you help us with our spiritual lives so that we are able to receive the spiritual gifts and serve you with our souls and preach the gospel and be a good testimony and for many people to come as a result of it to the knowledge of your things. We also ask you, that you bless our marriages, that you bless married couples, children, families. May there be harmony, union, wisdom, and let, there, let them lack nothing, Lord. And may you provide them with a job, with job opportunities and, and, and financial income. And may you, Lord, also allow us to enjoy all your promises. May the God of glory bless his church worldwide. May our Lord bless our sister Maria Luisa with the fullness of his power, the best of his blessing. Thank you, Lord. And may you always be with us and always guide us and, and protect us. And also grant the petitions of all those who are joining our live streams with all their affection who are joining us so lovingly and they're opening their hearts to you. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, amen. Glory to God. We are going to sing, brothers and sisters, chorus number 94, Sanctify Me in Your Word. 94. Truth, blessed is our Lord. A big hug to you all. May the Lord bless you. 